Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. So we have like very few students here. So only seven of you here. So we'll wait for five more minutes. Okay. So we'll wait for others to join, and then we'll begin the session. Okay. So I have some uh, few doubt in week five. So okay. Can so, I ask it now, or I will wait to complete the session? Then I will ask. Yeah, you can ask it now. Uh, so okay. Uh, so very small, small thing. Okay. Uh, one is uh, suppose uh, X belongs to the complex domain. Okay. Uh, then I can represent any vector or any point in that complex domain only as a real number, right? Because the real is a subset of the complex. Say, I am saying that x belongs to the complex domain. X is a and complex number or, or a complex x, vector. X is a complex vector, okay, and okay. I can represent that vector as one one, right? One one like a uh, two dimensional vector a uh, one one that's yes. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. No, instead of one plus i and one minus i, mm -hmm. I uh, I am saying that my vector is one and one, where the i component is basically zero. Can I okay. say that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. But but that becomes a real vector, right? No, that becomes a real vector. Uh, but real is a subset of uh, complex space, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, any number, any number in the space, I can always write that a plus i b, where uh, b is zero. Yeah. 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 You could do that. Yes. Because uh, in one part I am just reading, it says the a matrix become Hermitian only and only if when its uh, non-diagonal element is having the complex number. But uh, many of the example I find, he, a Hermitian matrix is having all the real number. Then I thought, ki, yes, the off-diagonal means non-diagonal items, they are basically representing at A plus IV where B is zero. Yeah, so basically what you're trying to say is symmetric matrices are also Hermitian matrices, right? That's what you're trying to imply. Correct. Sorry, come again, sir. So, yeah, the Hermitian matrices with the real numbers that is a symmetric matrix, correct? Yes, that is symmetric matrix. So, yeah, so yeah, all the symmetric matrices are also Hermitian matrices, but no, but the Hermitian matrices, uh, in general, in general, that's that's used for complex numbers, okay? Yes, but the non diagonal items. Uh, the, for any real number, I can represent that as a plus iv where b is equal to zero. My point is here. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. So for the for the for the real symmetric matrices, you could do that. Yeah. Because ultimately, everything I can represent as a inside the complex complex space because the imaginary part component is just representing as zero and it is shrinked to the real complex space. numbers. Are Hello. Yes, yes. Yeah. You're correct. You're correct, Sam. Okay. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah I, I got it. The second okay. thing, uh, the second thing, uh, um, one problem, sir, means uh, that is in practice assignment. Also, I find in grade assignment, okay. they are saying, uh, they are asking us to find the value of K uh, to become the matrix as a unitary. Okay. 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 So now there is many way I can find that. I can take Q transpose Q is equal to identity and corresponding value I just uh, equate it to one or zero and I can get the value of K. This is one method. And I can, since this, the matrix becomes uh, become a unitary, it's uh, all the columns is, has to be orthonormal. So the length is one. I can write the equation of length and equate it to one to get the value of K. And also I can do the two column vectors is orthogonal to each other to become a uh, unitary matrix. So I take a dot product of the column and equate it to zero to find the value K, right? Yeah, yeah. You could any, of the, any of the method can do. 
right but correct. actually i am uh, struggling with one problem first i uh, solve this by taking its length as one and then i find a value of k and okay. then i just uh, for my interest just cross checking whether i am getting the same k value when i am trying to solve it in other way so i take the uh, dot product of the two column try to find the k but they are the value of k i am not getting equal to the value of uh, your this thing okay. with the okay. length so, yeah, yeah yeah i got you so the thing is which is trying to say is the the answer the value of k which you are trying to get using two different methods it's not same right yes so can you can you point me out to the problem which problem you are talking about yes sir uh, yes actually that is a graded assignment problem where i get stuck but uh, yeah. uh, i can tell you the problem yeah 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 please tell yeah one minute i just cross check the problem again yes 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 that that's means whether i am making any mistake but i have checked two three times is the graded assignment problem number 7 Okay, What happened? Hmm. I got when I equate it to length, I got a value of k is equal to plus minus one. But when I am trying to approach uh, find the k value in another method, I am getting only one value of k, not the other one. Okay, okay. So the problem of which one? Seven. Okay. So the matrix a equals k plus i, k minus i root two. Okay, so it it could be possible that we have like multiple values. Okay, the the both answers which you are trying to say, right? The two different k values. Okay, the two different k values which you are trying to say, uh, are are those two values present here as two different options? Yes, yes, that is the more even. <laughs> okay, I have okay. more confusion. Okay, okay, so what what I I I'll cross check this problem again. Okay, the other thing I would like you to I would like you to do is, uh, so is it the values of k which you found like the two ways right? Okay, the first mm -hmm. is orthogonal thing and the other one is is uh, orthogonal. Uh, yeah, orthogonal. So the are they are they satisfying the both? Like like let's say let's say use the use the orthogonal to guess that is the length of the vector as one and then you found the k value. Okay. Once you found the k value, you check you check whether those vectors are orthogonal or not. I mean, whether whether they are orthogonal or not with respect to each other. That that you check, okay. And then okay. and then uh, for the other way also you check, okay. okay. Did you get what, what I was saying? Yeah, yeah, I got it, sir. But yeah, okay. Yeah. So please check that, okay. 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 Fine. So. I think we have like uh, yeah, such a number of people. So yeah, we'll we'll start the session, okay. So we will discuss the singular value decomposition. Okay. So basically, I will discuss the singular value decomposition, and after that, uh, we shall be discussing the next few concepts. All right. Okay. Sir, one more thing I have, sir. Okay, you yeah. first you complete this, and then I will ask that. Okay. So what was that regarding? This is one regarding that proof that uh, I just ask you, sir. Suppose the addition of two unitary matrix is leads to a unitary matrix, whether I have some proof or not. Okay. Okay. See the. Addition of two unitary matrices. I do not think that it, it leads to unitary matrix always. Okay, the proof for that is. Let's say we have this matrix here. Okay, A, B, uh, both are unitary. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. The as stated now, the condition for unitary is a into a transpose equals to i. Okay. Similarly, b b transpose equals to i. Okay. This is the condition. All right. So now, what you're what you're talking about is you're talking about a plus b whether whether a plus b is a, is a unitary matrix or not. Correct. So for right. this to be unitary matrix, thing is a plus b whole transpose should be equal to i. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
So this implies what? Uh, so a plus b whole transpose is nothing but a transpose plus b transpose, right? Uh, which which should be equal to what? A into a transpose plus b into b transpose plus a into b transpose plus now. Uh, Right, this is I. This is I, but but we do not know about this. Okay, we cannot comment about this. Okay, so uh, the the general idea is that a plus b need not always be unitary. Okay. Okay. Clear. Oh, okay. But okay, a b a b will always be unitary. A b is always unitary. Okay. Clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So over here, the uh, B transpose and A transpose should also be unitary, right? A transpose and B transpose. Yeah. I mean, when, when you say yeah, transpose, yeah, yeah. you mean that star, right? So correct, the, correct, correct. So when when A is unitary, A transpose is always unitary. B is unitary, B transpose is unitary. Okay. Yes. So then. A into B transpose and B into A transpose would also be okay. You are saying that AB whole transpose, AB AB transpose is unitary. Yeah. See, AB transpose we cannot see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. AB transpose is unitary. Okay. Okay. So so this this leads to I. Okay. And then B A transpose should will also be I, but then this equals to four I, right? Ah, uh, which is not unitary. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, but then yeah, the point you you pointed out is correct. A B transpose will be unitary. Okay. Okay. But in that case, <clears throat> it's. Uh... Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. The point. Okay. AB transpose is unitary, but then AB transpose need not be equal to I, right? When we say like AB transpose is unitary, what we are trying to say is AB transpose into AB transpose whole transpose equal to I. This is what we are trying to imply. We never know that AB transpose equal to I or not. Okay. So even this, this is not equal to four, right? All right, are you getting what I'm trying to say? Okay, A transpose A into A transpose equal to I because A is A is unitary. A B transpose is unitary, but A B transpose is not equal to I. It is only and only when A is equal to B. What? Can I repeat? When A is equal to B, then only I can draw this conclusion. A B transpose uh -huh. is equal to I. Correct, correct. Okay. Uh, But sir, uh, when A and B both are unitary, right? Oh, then also. Yeah, A and B both are both are unitary. Correct. Mm -hmm. But A B transpose may not be equal to I. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We we'll look at the big six. Big six. Uh, Will be the big six starts with the starts starts with the single value, single value decomposition. Okay. The unlike the un, un, unlike this uh, orthogonally diagonalization, right, which is applicable only for symmetric matrices, single value decomposition, it will be applicable to any matrix. Okay, and that need not even be a square matrix also. It 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 is applicable to any matrix. Okay. So this one, the one which we talked about is when A is a symmetry, A is a symmetry matrix. It can be orthogonal diagonal. Okay, this form, this this we have seen in the big five itself. Okay, moving forward, the way we say is that okay. I mean, this is an example for the for for this orthogonal diagonalization. Okay. And then the singular value decomposition. Let's say you have you have any real matrix, okay, any any matrix m cross n. Then 
the matrix A can be decomposed uh, into A equals to Q1 sigma Q2 Q2 transpose. Okay, where A is M cross N, it is not even a square matrix. But then Q1 is a M cross M unitary matrix. Okay, and then Q2 is a M uh, N cross N unitary matrix. Okay, and then this uh, sigma is a diagonal matrix. Okay. I mean, it, it it is diagonal matrix, but then it has it has some zero values at the at the diagonal also. Okay, at the diagonal elements. All right. Okay, until now is it clear? The I mean, the definition of single value decomposition. Okay, how 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 a matrix A can be decomposed? Okay, we we'll, we we'll look at the proof for this. Okay, we we'll look at the proof for this. So the thing is. When we have this A as M cross N, right? A transpose A will be N cross N. Okay, A transpose A will be N cross N. Mm, I'll just show that. When A is M cross N, okay, A transpose will be N cross N matrix. Sorry, N cross M matrix. Okay, which implies A transpose A will be N cross M matrix multiplied by M cross N, which gives you a N cross M matrix. Okay, N cross M matrix, and also A transpose A is symmetric. Okay, similarly, A transpose will be here. It will be M cross M multiplied by N cross M. So it will be a M cross M matrix, okay, and these two is symmetric, okay. A transpose A and A transpose are symmetric, okay. which basically means uh, the eigen vectors of A transpose A and A transpose are orthogonal to each other, okay. Okay. So uh let's say like there exists a basis of orthonormal vectors x1 to xn corresponding to the eigen values for this a transpose a okay we talked about is orthonormal vectors because a transpose a is a symmetric matrix there exists a orthogon orthonormal eigen vectors okay corresponding to the eigen values of a transpose a okay and you know is it clear This is the property of the uh, symmetric matrices which we use. Okay, symmetric or the homogeneous matrices. All right, clear? Yes, sir. Until now? Yes, sir. Yeah, this uh, eight yes, runs. Sir, last two, sir. Yeah. Can you can you repeat that last point? So eight runs for so A is n by n matrix. So that clear. But this yeah. uh, this point uh -huh. is not clear. There exists a base of orthonormal eigenvectors. That point I didn't understand clearly. What you say? Okay, so since A transpose A is symmetric, right? Yes. When when A transpose A is a symmetric matrix, then the eigenvectors corresponding to the different eigenvalues lambda one to lambda n they are orthogonal, right? Now this point, this point, do you know? When for okay. let's say uh -huh. for a symmetric matrix, okay, uh -huh. when lambda is not equal to lambda j, okay. then Xi Xi dot Xj it will be equal to zero, which basically means the eigenvectors uh, Xi and Xj are perpendicular to each other or orthogonal. Orthogonal. Okay. okay. Correct. Understand. Yeah. Understand. So, so in the matrix, the eigenvector is always represent the basis of that space, right? In this particular case, yes. Yeah. No. Whenever we uh, from the eigen value to we are. Basically, forming the eigen vectors, the matrix. It's always I have seen that it is always the basis vector of that particular space, since it is orthogonal to each other. Yeah, they form a basis when when you have n different eigen vectors. Yes, n different, different. And huh? since What? each is orthogonal to each other, I mean each column is orthogonal to each other. I mean mutually perpendicular to each other. So it basically span that space. Right, 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 right. Linearly independent. Correct. Linearly independent. Yeah. So, so when you have this n n ortho orthogonal vectors, right? When mutual orthogonal vectors, then they form a basis. Okay. And then, like using the second vectors, you can represent the matrix C. I mean, matrix that that particular matrix C in this particular case, C transpose C. Okay. 
all right mm. all right sir. so this one it's clear right so the yes. autonomous it is just like uh, making the length of each vector as one okay that's the only thing all right yep okay so we have this and this one this is just a proof for having this lambda is greater than 0 okay we have this a transpose a xi equals lambda xi right since a transpose a is is a symmetric matter of which 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 we are considering okay considering this xi as eigen vector and lambda as the eigen value by the definition we have this a transpose a xi equals to lambda xi okay all right okay yes yes okay so yeah Okay, no four. So when you when we constrain a transpose a x i dot product with 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 x i, okay, a transpose a x i can be can be replaced by lambda x i, okay. Lambda x i uh, dot product with with x i, it is nothing but since x i dot x i is is equals to one, this will be equals to lambda i, okay. Yes, sir, one question, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Uh, after forming the eigen equation, why suddenly I am taking the dot product with x i? This part I I am doing this huh? way, but I don't know why I am doing this. Ah, uh, see the the only the only uh, reason reason for us to do is just to get this form of like uh, for first first we'll be equating this to lambda i, and then we will be equating same to this uh, this uh, length of length of x i whole square. Okay. I mean, you'll get this x i transpose x i, which gives the length of uh, length of x i square, right? Okay. So just to equate these two, just to get this form, we are doing this. Okay. There's no other reason for it. Okay. Okay. I mean, just to uh, just to get this proof for lambda is greater than zero. Okay. Just to get this proof for lambda is greater than zero, we are doing this. All right. No, <clears throat> means uh, taking this dot product will represent some significance. Is there or no? It is a pure mathematical calculation only. No, it is just a pure mathematical calculation. Okay. okay. I mean, this is going to be called lambda, eh? and then and then we will we will use the same thing uh, to to represent it like to equate it to uh, modulus of x a whole square. Okay. That is the length of length of x a whole square. Okay. By equating these two, since lambda should be equal to the length of x a whole square. It cannot be equal to zero. I mean, it should be. It should be. It should be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this basically says that the all the eigen values of a transpose a it should be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. X i okay. is the eigen values. Lambda i is the eigen value. And what is x i? X i is the eigen vector. Okay. 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 So moving forward, so for the eigen values, we have this lambda one to lambda one to lambda n. Okay. Here we are just saying that there could be this zero. I mean, there could be the eigen values which are like zero. Okay. So we have lambda one to lambda r, which are like non-zero eigen values. Okay. From from lambda of r plus one to lambda n, we have the we have the eigen values as zero. Okay. All right. So, like we have this characteristic equation, right? After solving the characteristic equation, we could be getting the eigen values as zero. Also. Okay, that is like we could be getting no other solution other than other than eigen value equals zero. Okay, so we assume that we have this we have this r eigen values which are greater than zero, and then the and then the remaining eigen values are equal to zero. Okay, clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So the singular value, the singular values are defined as a singular value equals to square root of lambda. I. Okay, so the lambda i for which uh, for, for which lambda is greater than zero. Okay, these are the singular values. All right, for i equals to one to r, the singular values of matrix C A is defined as sigma i equals to square root of lambda i. Okay, where this lambda i is the eigen value of the Matrix A transpose A, okay, clear. Yes, sir. Okay. 
sir but why are we taking the square root why can't we take the lambda itself why can't we directly take the lambda yes sir why, i mean why are we taking doing the square root of uh, the non zero eigen values i mean there's no point in doing the square root of the zero values right yeah yeah no my question is why are we doing the square root okay why are we doing the square root that's a question yes sir okay okay so that that part you will be seeing later i mean if if you see it in the long run you'll be getting of you'll be getting why getting this okay just hold on okay i'll answer the question okay 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 so now uh, now let's take this uh, by a see y a vector as 1 by sigma i ax i okay 1 by sigma i ax i since uh, since the modulus of this ax i equals square root of lambda i okay since since uh, since the modulus of ax i equals square root of lambda i the modulus of y a the y a vector it's going to be equals to 1 okay it's going to be equal to 1 here we are getting the orthonormal vector i mean here here, here uh, i'll just say that i won't talk about the orthonormal thing but then we are getting we are getting this unit vector okay we are getting y as unit vector okay that is the reason why we are taking this uh, sigma i as a square root of lambda i okay if we if we had taken it as like lambda i itself we wouldn't be getting it as we wouldn't be getting the length of it as equal to 1 okay So from where this y i is coming? From where this y i? Ah, uh, this this y i you'll be you'll be using it to get this. Uh, you have you have here q one and q two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The y i will be coming here. The y i the the q two for q two vectors you'll be you'll be using this x one to x one to x n. Okay. and okay. then in the q1 in the q1 the this vector comes this y a vector comes comes here okay okay for once so that, uh, that we are using this huh for q2 matrix i am taking the x1 eigen vector and for q1 matrix i am taking y1 i y a i yeah, eigen yeah. okay yes yes to to get the to get the other set of uh, eigen vectors mm -hmm. you are using this y a okay 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 So here we we will not be having the entire okay. This is just to prove the orthogonal the the orthogonal case of like different eigen vectors. That is by a dot by j. This is kind of like evident because a x i equals to lambda a x i right? Okay, a x i equals to lambda a x i, and then a x i will be equals to will will be equals to lambda lambda j a x i. Okay. So the dot product of this of 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 this will all will be equal to zero because x i is is uh, is orthogonal to x i. Okay, clear? This one a x i a x i a x i a x i is orthogonal to a x i. That is why y i will be orthogonal to y j, which basically means y i dot y j will be equal to zero. Okay. So they are taking in the second thing. It is written that taking the dot product, right? Hmm, hmm, hmm. X transpose, A transpose, A, X J. Yeah, yeah. So, so they are just doing it in the normal way. A X J, A X J is nothing but this lambda J X J, right? Yes. Okay. No, from <clears throat> this A X I dot A X J, from there. How this equation arrive? X transpose i, a transpose a, x j. What is With what is x dot j? What is okay. what is x dot y? X dot y is nothing but x transpose y, right? Using yes. that formula. Yes, okay. yes. Oh. So, so they have used a x a dot a x a equals to a x a transpose multiplied by a x a. Okay. They just use that formula. Okay. Just, just that. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So they have uses a transpose a x j equals to a transpose a x j equals to lambda j x j because because yeah x j is the eigen vector of a transpose a which basically gives a transpose a x j equals to lambda j x j. Okay, from the definition itself. Okay, 
now we yes. have this uh, xa transpose this since since lambda j is the is is a constant you can just take it out okay which will give you lambda j by sigma i sigma j x transpose xa transpose xa okay xa transpose xa equals 0 because because xa is orthogonal to xa okay when i not equal here okay clear yeah yes sir okay so uh, similarly similarly like we have here like we like we have for x1 to xn we have here only y1 to yr y1 to yr because those are the only un, only singular values right okay because we have only from lambda on to lambda which is greater than 0 the remaining are equal to 0 okay that is why we have only y1 to yr orthonormal vectors okay they do not form a basis because for us the required dimension is here rm okay they form only only until until the rth uh, like rth dimension okay we need and we need until like m dimensions okay that is why what we do is we extend the we extend the basis okay we extend the basis like like this extending basis that was talked in the in the week five lecture if you, if you have noticed uh, while we are going for the shure theorem okay going for the shure theorem we have extended the basis that is let's say yeah, the e1 e2 yeah that that e1 then. so yeah. let's say i have I have one one vector okay i have one vector v1 okay and then and then i need to extend it to three dimensions I need to extend it to three, three dimensions. What I can do is, I will be getting like uh, n different. I mean, I'll I'll be I'll be getting a plane of possibilities. Like three dimensions, you can even you can just assume that I have I have one vector, right? I have one vector. I I need to I need to get two other vectors, two other vectors which are which are which are like perpendicular to each other, and then like perpendicular to B one also. Okay. There there are there are like infinite number of possibilities for that, but then. The the essence is we could always extend it extend it to m okay yes sir clear yes sir okay okay so so the so simple that, example for that is yeah let's say I have case, one vector as yeah someone there is something uh, yes sir so like um so let's say in this case we have uh if the total dimension is m and we have till r mm. and mm. from the r plus 1 uh, place we start with e1 e2 and go on till m minus r yeah yeah so so we we need to we need to get the I mean we, we need to extend it from m dimension sorry r dimension to m dimension bollo okay. aage bhi The simple example is let's say we have a we have a single vector one zero zero. Those three smooth. Okay, let's say let's say you have a single vector one zero zero. Okay, this is the this is single vector right? And then like you want to you want to have a you want to have a three dimensional basis. Okay, how do you get a three dimensional basis? You need to have two other vectors. You need to have two other vectors which are like perpendicular to this. Which are like perpendicular to this, okay? And then like those two vectors should be perpendicular to themselves also. Okay, the way you get it is you get a zero one zero, zero zero one. Okay, this is like this is like one example. You, you can be having like n different. I mean, you can be having infinite possibilities. Okay, this is just one example of extending extending the basis from 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 R one to R three. Okay, clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, now that now that we have extended the now now that we have extended the basis, okay, we will be getting this Q one as y one to y m, and then like Q two as x one to x m. Okay. So this is m cross m matrix, and then this is n cross m matrix. All right. Okay. So now we have this. Uh, now if we check for this Q one transpose a Q two, okay, a Q two is nothing but Okay, a q two that can be represented as is a x one to a x n. Okay, since q two equals to since q two equals x n to x one to x n. Okay, that can be written as is a x one to a x n. 
Okay. Ax one to Ax n. Now that if you look at this this sigma value, okay, this this will be sigma of i j will be equals to y i. Okay, this y i into y i into Ax j. Correct? Am I correct? This one. Ax j. Yes. 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 Right. The the I mean the element at the i th row and j th column it will be equals to y a transpose into a x j. Okay. Yes. But then this this y a transpose a x j also this a x j is nothing but uh, sigma j into y j right because y j okay this a x j can be rewritten as sig. Okay, this this a x j can be rewritten as sigma j into y j. Okay, so by getting this, what we have is we'll have this whole value as sigma j into y a transpose y j. Okay, since uh, when i not equal to j, since since uh, for for i not equal to j, we have this y a transpose y j will be equal to zero. Correct? Because because y a y j right. All the all uh, these yes, all yes, these vectors yes, they're yes. like orthogonal. Yes. Okay. So when when i not equal to j, this will be equal to zero. When i equal to when i equal to j, a y a transpose y a it will be equal to one because uh, they are they are orthogonal vectors. I mean the length of the the length of each vector is one. Okay. That is why it will be equal to sigma j. Okay. Clear. Yes, sir. Now that we have we have proved this, we have we have this uh, we have this sigma equals to q q one transpose a q two. We could just rewrite this to get a equals to a equals to q one. Okay, q one sigma q two transpose. Okay, that is simple. Okay, we have this sigma equals to q one transpose a q two. Right. Okay, multiplying both sides by q one, we will get q one sigma equals to Q one, Q one transpose A Q two. Okay, this will be equal to I because because this is uh, this is unitary matrix. Okay, or or orthogonal. Okay, since it is a real case, since it is a real space. Okay, you have this Q one E equals to Transpose. Okay. This will again be equal to I, which basically means uh, A equals to Q one sigma Q two transpose. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just rewriting this, uh, you'll be getting this A equals to Q one Q one sigma Q two transpose. Okay. Okay, that too for that too that too for i equals to r only. I mean, until until when i equals to one to i equals to r. Okay, after that it, it's going to be equal to zero. All right? Yeah, because yeah, the y the lambda after that becomes. Okay. All right. So this uh, entire thing. We are <clears throat> doing in real space, right? Yes, yes, yes. We are doing it real. Space. If the same is in complex plane, then instead of Q, we will write there U. Instead of Q, we will write U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will be writing U, and then instead of transpose, you will be writing it as star. Star. And in case of in the case of dot product, we will. Take the transpose uh, conjugate transpose. That's all. Yeah, yeah. The conjugate transpose with nothing, nothing but star, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. These are the only change from real space to complex space. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at it, a equals to q one sigma q two transpose, which which basically gives a transpose equals to q one sigma sigma transpose q one transpose. This this we can prove. Okay. We have this uh, a equals to q one sigma q two transpose. Okay. A transpose will be equals to q 
one sigma two two transpose two transpose. Okay. Again, consider this as A, and then this as B. Okay. This whole set as B. It will basically give me A B whole transpose equals to B transpose into A transpose, right? It will give me E Q two whole transpose. E Q two transpose whole transpose into Q one transpose. Okay. Uh, this 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 we can again do this uh, A B whole transpose thing, which will give me Q T Q two transpose whole transpose into sigma transpose Q one transpose. Okay. Which is nothing but Q two. Okay. This one. Now, if you do this, A A transpose. Okay, A A transpose. A A transpose equals to Q one sigma U two transpose because that is A multiplied by Q two sigma transpose Q one transpose. Yeah. So Q two transpose into Q two that that will be equals to I right because Q two is in there. Okay, uh, which will get, basically give you. Again, Q. Okay, this one, right? Right. Yes. A transpose equals to Q one sigma sigma transpose Q one. Okay. Correct. Yes. Sir. What does this say? What does this say? Can can anyone tell? Initially, that uh, this is Q one or Q two, right? No, this is Q two transpose. This is similar to this form, no? A X Y similar to this. Yeah, uh, this similar to this Q one, this Q one lambda, Q one transpose, which we are seeing for the, which we are seeing for similar to matrix, correct? Right, yes, correct. Yes. Correct. So, what are the what are the what I mean, what are the vectors of this matrix? This is nothing but the eigen vectors of this uh, this this symmetric matrix, right? Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. what does this say? Is the vectors the vectors that go into Q one are nothing but the eigen vectors of A transpose. Yes. Okay. Okay. Clear. Yes. Sir. Similarly, similarly for Q two, I mean, A transpose A will be equals to Q two. Sigma transpose sigma Q two. Okay, it's going to be something like this. Okay, which basically which basically means the vectors. Okay, the vectors the vectors of this Q two are nothing but the eigen vectors of the A transpose A. Okay, that part is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, I mean that is just a simple way for you to find out the. For for you to do the single valid decomposition, okay. The same thing, the eigen vectors of A transpose A going to Q two, and then the eigen vectors of A, A transpose going to Q. All right, okay. So that's it. That's it with, with respect to single valid decomposition. Okay. All right. So I guess uh, Vishal is here. Yes. So Vishal will be continuing uh, from here onwards. Okay. Do you have any questions in SVD? <coughs> okay. Okay. I guess not. So yeah. So we shall. You can continue from here. Shall I read that? Sir, one question. Yeah. In the tutorial that uh, we are seeing, that this. Uh, Means when I am deco decomposing this this thing, your matrix. So one matrix get uh, uh, splitted into three: Q one, sigma, and Q two, right? So hmm. <clears throat> the example they are showing is as they are changing the rank, the clarity of the original vis-a-vis -vis the approximation will vary. So. Uh, How does this color will come effect? Say they have shown in the uh, this thing in black and white mode. When I am actually try to add color in the picture, whether I am getting means more number of matrix or the uh, logic behind the 
same uh, it is same the 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 logic behind it is it's going to be the same okay it's going to be the same the only thing the only thing that's going to change is the clarity for the color right it's going to change okay that's a, that's the only thing that's that's going to be different okay it's 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 going to add the rank uh, it's going to add add to add to the add to the rank because because we we need to be representing the color also here okay we can't be just uh, representing it as like white and black okay the 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 normal way the normal way which you represent there right okay that that just using like black and white okay for color for color we need like different combinations too so it just adds to the rank but then the basic underlying concept it's the same okay uh means number of component this this additional component will add where in the sigma or q1 or q2 it's going to, it's going to add to the sigma the rank right that that sigma hmm. sigma also it's going to, it's going to it's going to add yeah oh that and means huh. when i am taking the linear combination of this sigma matrix few combination is there to add the color means that what you are saying like uh, it's 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 going to increase the q12 because because the dimensions the dimensions uh, we should be requiring more more dimensions to rep to represent the entire image okay to represent the entire image we need to be we need to be having the more dimensions which basically increases the sigma also okay the rank also yeah that means uh, one part is the clarity of the picture where yeah. say um, i am varying 1 to 100 the rank but to add bring color into that picture i need more dimension that right. what you are saying right okay 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 so from now onwards we shall be taking care okay uh, michel are you are you there yeah yara okay okay yeah so we shall be continuing from now on uh, can, can you wait for 2 minutes ram uh, i'll yes, just yes. start oh, okay yeah so students like you can just wait for 2 minutes maybe we'll take a break and then we shall be continuing okay okay thank you sir yeah so yeah sorry for that so we'll start with the rest of the part so the rest of the part in the sixth week is related to positive definiteness so we'll start with that so am i audible like can somebody speak yes 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 clear yeah. oh, oh, thank you so i'll just share my screen so have you went through the lectures like last two lectures or like have you went through the sixth like uh, week content yes sir yes no acha yes yes because you have to ha uh, yeah and one more update like the extension won't happen so you have to submit before 12 so i stopped and then you didn't got the permission for that so you have to submit it, the assignment before 12th itself so the pay, the graded assignment is not that difficult of the 6th week you can go through that like most of the questions are from uh the positive def definiteness and you'll be able to do that maybe you have already seen the content so you are already familiar but i'll just go through the content once more uh i'll just give you a bit method a different method just to calculate how to see the definiteness of the matrices and all. so i'll just share my screen so have you went through the tutorial of 6th week so this was the uh, 
i guess slides that was used in the tutorial also okay so can you tell me one so uh, for which matrices and all generally we check for that uh, definiteness which type of matrices generally we check and for which type of matrices we can't check the definiteness Okay, can somebody say if the matrices is not symmetric? Can we know regarding the eigen values whether it's a positive or negative? If if that matrix is not symmetric, can we know regarding the eigen values or the energy stored in that matrices? Can we know regarding that if if the, if you are not having the real symmetric matrices? We cannot definitely say uh, for the. For which or matrix? If it, is, if it is not a real symmetric matrix. Okay, so if if we are having so whatever we are learning here, so we are all learning for the real symmetric matrices one. Okay, so whenever the matrices are symmetric, uh, see what we have learned till now. If, if the matrices are symmetric, real and symmetric, the eigen values will be positive, right? Like not positive, the eigen value will be real, right? So now we'll read if a matrix is real symmetric. So how can we know regarding the Eigen values with whether it's a positive or negative. Okay, so positive definiteness can help us to know regarding the sign of the uh, eigen values also. Okay, so this is the one of the benefit regarding. So if we are having a real symmetric matrix, we can know regarding the uh, whether uh, whether this matrices or the function that will create from that matrices is having what sort of energy it's having. Like it's a positive or a, a negative. So we'll go through the graph also. That's pretty simple. We'll go through three or four tests generally. Like uh, you have already went through the lecture. Then uh, one test is eigen value test or the pivot test or the energy test. So three, four tests are there that can help you to know regarding the uh, positive definiteness or the whether it's a, the matrix is positive definite or semi definite or negative definite or indefinite. Okay. So so if if I'm having the matrices like. If I'm having the function, so how will you write the matrices from this function? Does anybody know how, how to write the matrices from the function? So, okay. Are you not able to hear me, or uh, you are not? Yes, yes, we can write. Here, here. So, how will you write the function in the matrices form? So we can take the x and so y. Uh, how f of x x okay, for this six f of x y f of x y f of y y oh so what generally this this is a maybe you'd have heard about this Hessian matrix right mm -hmm. this Hessian matrix generally you'll read in the I get next week or next to next week so if you are having a big this is a simple one so if, if this was a two cross two so if you are having three cross three then so you can write it like this x y z and then you have to differentiate it first with the respect to x or whether you are differentiating with respect to z first or x that doesn't matter here you have to differentiate with respect to y and z and then this is f z this is uh, y z and this is f z curves okay so this is how generally we write if you are have given the equation okay then you can you will be able to write the matrices okay and this fxy is the double differentiation of that equation this is uh, generally the differentiation with respect to x and then y okay so this is the first thing that uh, if, if this uh, equation has been given you, you are able to write in the matrix form okay and then we'll check whether it's a positive definite or not so positive that definite generally means if you are having a function okay and if that is when uh, like if, if when i say so zero zero okay so if if, like for example, this is a matrix. Uh, this is the equation uh, or the function or the graph. Okay. And if this is when it is at zero comma zero, like zero comma zero can be one stationary point, can be some different value also, but zero comma zero we are taking. Okay. And this is not the two D graph. This is a like a, you can assume this as a ball. Okay. This is a ball. Okay. So the energy, like for example, this is the zero. Okay. X Y and this is the Z that is coming out from our laptop okay this is x and the z is coming out from there and this is the ball we are happy okay this is the equation it's a simple equation this is a positive definite uh function okay because the energy that is you can see that the for all the value like 
if you are doing this x transpose and x the value would be positive for this case and for each and every like whatever the point you are taking okay the value of the matrices should be the value of the function should be positive like you can take any value okay any of the value around the 3d okay and we'll see that the value at that point is positive okay this is the basic uh, definition of positive definite okay so this is positive definite and semi definite means like assume this ball as a this ball like for example assume that's a valley valley so generally valley this this will go around like this right so this, this is a curve and then this value will go like this like in a one plane the whole point is zero zero okay so here it was just a one point here it's a, like a value like i'll show you that figure uh maybe i'll just google it or so are you able to like get it this, this is a value like mountain valley and the valley all the this plane at this plane the value is zero zero okay so not this like zero zero like all, for all this plane the down plane the value is zero okay so what happens generally in positive definite so the the energy consumed or the uh, or the what you can say the value for all, all the points whatever you are taking will be positive but here it can take x transpose a x will be equal to zero also so it will take z zero also here it will not take zero okay so that's the basic difference between semi definite and the positive definite okay this is the one uh, thing so till now it's clear right so i'll show you this figure also i'll just download it yeah so this is the figure so if this is a okay so this is a basic definite like positive definite so if this is coming upside like if a is greater than 0 then the diagram will be like this if a is less than 0 then it will become a, a negative definite okay and this is semi definite like i told you it's a valid i like this this whole plane will be having some value zero right and this is indefinite like uh, it's a normal mountain where it can sometimes the uh, gradient will be positive sometimes will be negative so at this point it can be so for some value it's negative for some value it's positive so it is indefinite so this we'll see how generally from the matrices how can you say so till now this figure diagram is clear right so which sort of diagram is definite and which sort of diagram is semi definite and the indefinite right yes sir okay so i'll just go through the slides uh, now So this was a basic quadratic. Uh, okay, so this was a basic quadratic function, and and so this, uh, is yeah. Visible. Are you asking something? So screen is not visible. Oh, screen is not visible. Yes. Is it visible, now? Yes, sir. Yes. Have so have you seen the diagram that I showed you? Yeah, the saddle that thing. I saw after that. Picture. Okay, so this was the diagram. This was the diagram that you saw, right? Sir. Yes. Okay, so so you can differentiate between this definite, positive definite, and semi definite and indefinite, right? So this is a like for example at this point, this is a minima, right? Because it's a positive definite. Oh, yes. And so if I am having this function, okay, so you would have read in the childhood also if you are having a quality equation, and if that for that quality equation like. For example, the quadratic equation is x squared plus two x y plus some five. Okay, if that x is having the coefficient positive, then the function will go upward. So this quadratic equation will be like this. So the quadratic equation will go like this. This is not uh, like explained. This simply I am telling. This quadratic equation will go like this. If this equation is like this, to some a b x y. Okay, and no, not this. Uh, Two a b x. Uh, yeah, this is how generally we write. Okay, see. And if this is negative, then the plot will be like this in most of the cases, right? So here also we are doing the same thing. So if this a is positive, okay, so it will go upward. I'm just telling about the graph. So there are so many tests that you can do to get the positive definite test. 
uh, of a function or a matrices okay if this function is given if, if only function is given first you have to check whether what is the a so a is a is positive that means the function will be like whether it's a positive like definite uh, it's, it, it will be a uh, positive definite okay and then you have to change the other like the first thing you have to check is whether a is positive or negative if it's positive that means the diagram or the plot is going up, upward that is for sure and then you have to check the determinant so that i'll do uh, So we'll start. So this is the, another notation. This generally we call this as the energy of a what you can say the matrices. Okay. This is how generally energy. you write. Uh, what? That is not the energy of the matrix. Yeah, energy generally we say energy of this matrix, energy consumed by that matrix is A. And this should be if this is positive, then this is a positive definite is equal to zero, like greater than equals to zero, then it's a semi definite. So we'll go through that. And if you have to see, uh, these are basic simple things that has been taught here regarding the, how to calculate the first order de partial de derivative and second order partial derivative. Uh, okay. So this, we are starting for the stationary point. Like for example, this, uh, we are having a function and that vanishes at P comma Q. Okay. So at P comma Q, the, uh, like the first de derivative is zero. And then you have to calculate the second derivative to know regarding the stationary point, which type of stationary point is it like for, it can be minimum or it can be maximum or it can be a saddle point. Like you can't say the saddle point is that point that you can't say whether at this point, after this point, whether the function will go down or up. Like, for example, I told, I show you this, this is the, you can say the saddle point at this point. Like if you'll go right side, the power, the value of the function will increase. Okay. And if you'll go in this side, like if, if you think this, this, this line as a, uh, the Z plane, if you'll come outside from that screen, you'll see that the value of the function is decreasing. So from this point, you can't say anything, right? So whether the function will increase or decrease that sort of point is a saddle point. Are you getting my point? Yes. Yeah. So for like, for example, this point, you can, you can directly say it's a minima, right? So if you first dif uh, differentiate the function, will get zero. And again, we'll, uh, if you are, so saddle point, uh, sorry, the stationary point will get after the first differentiation. Then to know regarding that stationary point, whether it's a minimum or maximum, you have to do that double differentiation. Then you get to, if, if this uh, double differentiation is positive, then it's a minima and if it's a negative, then it's a maximum. Okay. With the plot also, you can directly say, but yeah, this is mathematically, you, how will you say the different double differentiation? But you have, to have a, if you have a plot, you can directly say, like for example, to me, get the minima, this a, this is a, right? This is how we calculate if we are having x square. So with the Hessian matrix, we already know the fx, x, like we are differentiating this with respect to x two times. So you'll get a, so this a should be positive that we already say uh, in the quiet equation also that a, if that a is positive, that means the plot is going upward. If the plot is going upward, that means the stationary point will be minima right for the maxima this a is negative other than that everything is same like the determinant should be greater than zero determinant should be greater than zero for both the cases for the saddle point we can't say anything like the determinant is negative okay and if this is so zero it's inconclusive yeah so with saddle point like we have both the decent and the ascent at the from the same point yeah on so if whenever you are having a function with the de determinant as less than zero, that point, you can't say anything like you, you will say this is a saddle point that after that point, it can go up also. And for some other point, it can go down. Like, for example, I shown you the figure. Okay. So from like, for example, this is the saddle point. Okay. So if I'll go this side, maybe the, the positive uh, function is like this, but if I'm going like this side, maybe the function like this for this the value is negative. Okay. This is a saddle point. So for this, how do we check that? So determinant for that, the determinant should be less than zero. Okay. Okay. So now we are moving to the, if we are having the matrices. Okay. So we were having the function. Now we were able to know regarding the 
stationary point how do you check the stationary point these are the four simple method how to check the stationary point you can just double differentiate for differentiation you will get the saddle point uh, sorry stationary point for the double differentiation after the double differentiation you can get uh, uh, regarding the minima maxima or the saddle now we are having the matrices okay now you have to know regarding so that is the we generally go through this positive definite positive semi definite negative definite negative semi definite and this indefinite function so we are having five type of matrices or the function how will you check that so the first uh, test is what this is the energy test okay so this is if the function is greater than zero like x transpose a, a is the matrices so if x transpose a x is greater than zero then you will say this is a positive definite function first or the positive definite matrices the pdm okay and for this cases whenever the function is out the matrix is pd like positive definite for this function or for this matrices all the eigen values should be positive okay, how why generally we need like regarding the sign of the positive the sign of the eigen value see whenever uh, in the whenever uh, we used to solve the uh, what you can say the some uh, equations and all like in the decaying system we used to solve some equation for that we need the eigen value should be negative one so that it can decay like for example if you were lambda x was there and if lambda is negative then only this function will decay okay so for that case for those cases and all if we if we already know regarding the eigen values and all so that may help us okay so here also the sign of the eigen value will help us a lot okay that's why if, if we are able to know the, regarding the matrices if, if it's a positive definite matrices so we can say that all the eigen values is greater than 0 greater than 0 and for this case it is greater than equals to 0 so for positive semi definiteness for that matrices the eigen values can be so some eigen value for sure will be 0 and most of the values will be greater than 0 so this is the difference so here also the energy consumed by this matrices is greater than 0 and here it can be greater than equals to 0 so that is the basic difference between definite uh, positive definite and positive semi definite for the negative semi definite the energy stored in this is less than 0 and the eigen value will be all negative and for the negative semi definite the same thing with less than equals to 0 and for the indefinite that that we already talk if, if we are having getting the stationary point at a saddle point we we'll say this is a indefinite function okay and if you have to check from there so there the function can go up also the function the value of the function can go down also okay from that minima point so this was a basic uh, what you can say the way to classify or uh, basic way to know regarding the matrices okay so now we are having some test okay so okay this is the same method we are using uh, okay so this is the first method and generally we call this as a determinant test or so yeah so i'll just show you the okay. so like for example i'll just go through an example and then maybe help you to understand so there is a one matrix okay Two. This is a question. Okay, so now we have to tell regarding. So this is a symmetric real symmetric matrices. So we can use all the concept. Okay. so now we have to say regarding if if this function if this matrix so first is if this matrix is a positive definite yes. so what is the value of c and for the second case if this is a semi definite what is the value of c so how will you start i will start working on this so the first method can somebody say like have you got the point like how to check the definiteness of the function yes okay so the first uh, okay so the first method how will you approach this question so there are three method generally I, i'll tell you first so the three the the basic method i already told you but the 
the test that you will apply on the matrices are the first is eigen. Sorry, eigen vector. Eigen vector is also one method. Uh, first, I'll go through the determinant test. So how will you check the determinant? So for this, so the determinant in generally is, so if you are having three cross three matrices, okay, so you have to get the determinant of first one cross one, then get the determinant of two cross two, and then get the determinant of three cross three. And all the values should be positive. Okay. So the, for the first determinant one, so that is the one cross one, the determinant is what? Two. What is the value of determinant two? Three. It's one three. Yeah. So this is also positive. And for the determinant three, what is the value? Can somebody calculate? Three. So the last one is two plus i. How much you are getting? Is it's two plus i? Is it the last element? Uh, how much? The last element in that matrix. Is two this is two plus c. Or c. How much you're getting? Six plus four C minus C minus three minus. Three. So this is what can see. So three C you're getting, right? Okay. So this is three C. So what can be the value of C so that this is the positive definite matrix? Than zero. Okay. So it should be greater than zero. So C should be greater than zero. And for the semi positive definiteness, C should be greater than equals to zero. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the first method and this is applied for every, like all the matrices. So you can check for the determinant test. You can go through all the one cross one or two cross two or three cross three or whether it's the four cross four, you can go for all the determinant and if it's a positive, then you can directly say it's a positive definite matrices. Okay. So now we'll go through the second test. So you'll conclude the same thing, but we are having two, three tests. Okay. So whichever suits you, you can do with, go with that. The second is the pivot value test. Okay. So which operation will you apply on this matrices so that we'll get the row equation. What is that? Yeah. That form. So you have to put this as a zero and zero, this both zero. How will you do that? So we can half this one. So R2 can be what R1 by two R2 plus, plus R2, right? Yes. And similarly for R3 also. Yeah, the same question. Same. So how much you'll get? Uh, you'll get uh, two minus one minus one. This will get zero. This will get how much? Two five. minus three by two. This also will get uh, minus three by two. This will get uh, minus three by two. This will get three by two plus C. Okay. So now what you will apply now you have, now you can do the sum, right? We can directly do the sum. R2 plus R3, right? You get this as a zero. 
minus one minus one zero. This is three by two minus three by two. This is zero zero. I will do the summation. This C right. So what are the pivot values here? So the pivot value is what? This one. This one, right? So in the pivot test also, all the pivot values should be greater than zero. So this is greater than zero. This is also greater than zero. If C is greater than zero, then this is a positive definite function. And if C is greater than equals to zero, then this is a semi-positive definite. Okay. So we are getting the same thing, right? From the either we are calculating from the eigen value, uh, sorry, determinant test or with the positive definiteness test. Okay. Uh, sorry, that determinant test or pivot test. So both are same. Like you can approach from the different method and conclude the same thing. So this is our second method. And the third method is also like the energy test. What you can do? You can just run multiply x a x. And then you can go for like whether you can see whether this fun and that is a bit dif difficult here. The third test here, the energy test. For the energy test, what you have to do? You have to multiply this x transpose. That x will be what x y z. Then a and x, and then you have to see. You have to uh, all the the energy stored in this. Diagram, or you can say the matrices should be greater than zero for this PD, and for the SPD, this should be greater than equals to zero. And for that cases, you have to just uh, do some mathematical calculation and see for which values of C this this function will hold, and for this which value of C this will hold. Okay, and then you can get the value. You will get the same uh, value from there also. Okay, this is the third test. So normally. Uh, other tests are also there. Like I don't remember which uh, eigen values also is possible. Like if you are having if C was not like the eigen values should be greater than zero. Like that also you can do. Like if you are having simple matrices been given without C and all, you can directly calculate the eigen values. All the eigen values are positive. You can directly say it's a PD. And if some eigen values are equal to zero, then you can directly say. Uh, and one one more method I guess that is also a transpose a. If you will calculate a transpose a, and if you are getting all the independent uh, eigen vectors, okay, for that a transpose a, then also you can say this is a positive definite, okay, because all the yeah because the eigen vectors you are getting is independent, so you can directly say the number of radial would be equal to the number of uh, what you can say, whatever you are calculating number is same. That's why. The you will get the independent three independent if this is a three cross three and if all the eigen vectors are independent you can directly say but that is a bit uh, what do you say painful test okay to do that right so what is left now uh, I'll just go through that. So. so can you just like uh, yeah uh, uh, go through that red transfer say thing again. Yes. Oh yeah, a transpose a also that c a if you are having a matrices okay, some matrices. So if you calculate a transpose a, you'll get some real symmetric matrices, right? You are already having the symmetric matrices, you'll get some real symmetric matrices only, and then you have to calculate the eigen value. If you are calculating eigen value, eigen value, and then you have to calculate eigen vector, and then you need to see whether it's a, like you can calculate from the eigen values also like if it's a Distinct. Okay, so that. Okay, if so, why to calculate a transpose a? But I read somewhere that a transpose a. Okay, if you are calculating a transpose a, and if you have to go through the eigen vector only, so I to calculate the eigen vector, you'll calculate eigen values. So why not you calculate the eigen value of this mat eigen values of this matrices? And if this is a positive, you can directly say it's a positive definite, right? But if you have been given a transpose a directly, right? So a transpose a matrix has been given, and then you have been asked regarding the a vector whether it's a positive definite and not definite. If you have been given a, then you can directly say right. But if you have been given a transpose a matrices, okay. For that cases, you can use this method. You, for that matrices, if you have been given a transpose a matrices, and then been asked regarding the a matrices, then you can do. You can calculate the eigen vector, and then you will see whether it's independent or not. All the three like 
if the and values are three distinct, then you can directly say it's uh, independent. And if it's, you are getting a repeated one, then you need to go through the GM theoretical multiplicity and aim, and then you'll be able to know regarding whether all the eigenvalues, eigenvectors are uh, independent or not. Okay, this is a painful method. You can read from yeah. some, yeah. So let's just see whether what else is left. I don't think so. Anything is left, I guess. Uh, okay, so I'll just go through this slide. This method, I guess, you already know. So this is some example has been given. Like for example, this this was a matrix. You can directly write this. This was a function we given. You can write this matrices. Okay, and with this matrices, you can calculate the stationary point. How will you calculate that? You just Single differentiated equated to zero, you'll get the x y. You'll get the stationary point or the point where the function vanishes. Okay, you'll get zero zero here. So you got zero zero, here. and then you have to see whether it's a minima or maxima. To get that, what you'll do, you will just double differentiate that with respect to x and y. Okay, and if this is a positive, you can say directly it's a minima at zero zero. So it's a minima. So how this becomes four? Okay, this is wrong. This is some. Typing error. And sir, also the formation of matrix. If you can check. Here. Yeah. No. So if you differentiate this function with respect to, so this is four, correct? So you can directly what you can do. If you have to, if you have confusion, what you can do the hit and trial also, right? So you can just multiply this. What will get? Four x plus two by right. Not this one, sir. Which one? In one practice assignment five, which you can solve. Then this formation of equation will be easy. Means clear to us. Okay. So I'll just go through this slide. There is nothing much in this like last two lectures, right? I don't think so. You are having any issue, right? This clear, okay? How to get regarding how to say regarding the positive definiteness or. Not like semi-definite or whatever the function. This this is also one positive definite function one. And this zero comma zero is the minima. So this function is going upward and this also is going upward. So that's why it's a positive definite function. Similarly, there was one more example. So that you can go through the tutorial slide one and you'll get the point. Okay. So okay, I'll go through the questions also. So, so only if one you're question. Any, yeah. One if you're question any I, issue, ask. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Only one question I have uh, for the indefinite case. Okay. okay. So that means I am failed to uh, locate it. Whether uh, if I change my coordinate or mm -hmm. shift from the critical point, the function will be strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. That I am not able to say. That is why I am saying it is indefinite. Right. Yeah. 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 But. My question is whether to checking this, uh, is there any limit concept is there means in the vicinity of that point or say, I will say ki, uh, for a given car, it may have some local maxima, but after that it will change. I don't know. So See. that part if you can. Okay. So if you are local minima or local maxima, also you will check with this. This is an indefinite function, right? So this is the uh, why, point. this indefinite you are calling since uh, when you are changing from the critical point you are not able to say ki it is yeah. uh, uh, means strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. Right, right, correct. So, but the, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, is there any limit means within that boundary I need to check? Is this something because these figures is uh, pretty easy, Simple. but when uh, Okay, so you're asking, so see, okay, I got your point, uh, I don't know what to see. If, if you are saying if this is a function and after some like infinite point got like this, this, this is what you are saying. Yes. Is there any function? Uh, yeah, it can be like, there can be some function go like this and then after like infinite, like Suppose sir, instead of quadratic, if you go for the uh, to the power four. Yeah, this is quad like 
that that I, I'm just I, I imagining this as a uh, 3D picture only. Like this is a going all the sides, and after some like for example, this is a mountain. Not mountain. This is a what you can say. In the generally we have that in the ocean and all. Okay, and then it will go up. Like it generally go in all the direction, and then after a point, it started decreasing again. so i guess whatever we are checking we are just checking for the local minima and maxima right for the global minima and maxima that i need to check whether if we are having a function like right? so going like this and then after the night point it's again it started decreasing and if this is going below this stationary point so i guess for this i don't think so in the real symmetric we are having the matrix as a real symmetry you'll get like this because whenever you solve some problem in the gradient descent also you'll get the convex uh, function and those convex function generally will be in this form like whatever i have seen the so gradient descent is pretty clear because they are considering the limit concept that means yeah point ne near but here is the same thing that part i am just asking uh, okay that i need to check whether because uh, like whatever i have read i get just talking about the lo local thing one local minima local maximum so let's still it will be bound by the solution set for that matrix right uh you can you speak out again like your voice is not that clear uh, so that still i am saying that still it will be bound by the Like that matrix, right? It will be having a certain limit, right? Yeah, that that that. So, hmm. so within, I think within that subspace, that that subspace might be infinity symmetric, but I think within that subspace, it it should be global as well, right? Yeah, within some like if I am defining some values like this, like minus. some some fixed value some alpha to my some alpha minus alpha to plus plus alpha and this alpha is very large or, or whatever the value it is and we are defining for this foundation only then we can say regarding the local and global also right but if we are not defining the boundary that that then for those cases we will say this is the local only right yeah. but if we are defining the boundary then we can say it's a local or Uh, or global we are not caring about right if if the boundary is been defined but i don't know whether uh, because if if we are having some matrices the boundary would be defined right for energy purposes i'm not sure about that i need to read from somewhere right? okay okay sir yeah so if you done with just uh, practice assignment okay. five if you can do it i'll go through that so so nobody is having any issue in the conceptual part right because so these are pretty simple ones uh, so i'll just go through this uh, practice segment question number 5 so just you just show us once this one yeah the okay. general approach to do that one is to go through the hessian matrices or the other is try hit and trial So heat and trial with this uh, three goes three is very painful, sir. Yeah, then we can try that Hessian matrix. That that formula you can apply. So if what is that? If you can just explain, sir, then easy okay. for us. So one x square is one, then it should be one for pakka, and this is be minus one. So for all the cases, it's one and minus one. Okay. So now I'll go through. This is the differentiation of x x, right? This is the differentiation of x y. no in this matrix what are the element in terms of x y how it is how See. it should so this is f x x so this is x y and z right this is f x y this is f x z so can you tell me the function Mm -hmm. 
Sir, but in uh, this case, uh, I mean, using this only, uh, I think you can directly eliminate in this. Yeah, directly direction. also. See this. Not directly, like using the session methods only. That y square will be zero in the is zero in the one case. Yeah. So this why case, you are writing one? From where you were getting one? This one coefficient. The coefficient, if you oh, differentiate this function, so what do you have to do? You have to differentiate this function with respect to x, like twice. So it will differentiate x square. I guess you get the coefficient one. Uh, one. Two, sir. No, two. You two get, x right? and then two. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get two here. Uh, that is the next And here also you'll get two x. Right. Okay, that can go like if you'll get yeah. from everywhere mm -hmm. to you can write it outside. It, okay. And then zero is for y square, you'll get zero, right? No term. No term is there. For xy, what do you get? For xy also zero, I think. We'll differentiate with respect sure. to yeah. Uh, like for solving this, do we actually have to like differentiate it or we just follow the pattern? You have to solve this, right? Yeah. And this is one confusion because if you are uh, double differentiated and after that you are writing that as two, then the example that okay, you've one, shown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay, which example? Uh, this one. Okay. In the lecture video. In this one? No. Go up, sir. First example, example one. This is not the coefficient generally we write. This is part we generally solve, I guess. So yes, sir. Yes, solve, this one. If you then... solve fx, fxy, no. this is a function of fx, okay? And this is fxy and this is ffy. Yes. If I'm solving, if I'm differentiating, okay. The coefficient, this is eight. The coefficient. Because, because you are basically multiplying everything. So if you take the double differentiation, then you're then just doing, taking the gradient of the fx. Like the like the trend of the gradient. Okay, so if I'm solving this, this will become what? It takes, and then if I'm differentiating with respect to x y, this will go then go become four. Then this also will become four, and this will become four. Now well, this is how generally we write, I guess. Uh, okay, I'm good. So, okay, so if we are writing the coefficient of fx, then it's correct, right? Yeah, I, is, from what I saw, I that's what I like deduced from what I saw in the lectures and uh, uh, practice setup. Okay. In the yeah, lectures, it has not been told, right? How to write this? Yeah, it like he just solved. It. So I think uh, what I understood is we take the we say the same position that is f x square. FXX, FXX, but if you're taking the coefficient, how come this? Uh... Yeah, that's what that's what I was going to say. So, uh, fx the fxy plus fyx should be 
uh, like it would be the same, right? When mm. you write it in the equation form. So the sum of that should be uh, equal to the sum in the matrices. Which sum? So let's say you have. Uh, okay, okay. You are going to have coefficient should be the sum of the coefficient should be equal to the sum of the value in the matrices. This is what you are saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because uh, we are writing the coefficient. That's it. Um, uh, I didn't calculate it any time, <laughs> but I was like thinking that we are generally write this. Because if I'm having equations like this, sir. like for example, fx, y, there was. No, uh, sir, for two plus two, it is easy. I understand. <laughs> but when I go for three cross three, then this heat and trial method is a little difficult. But just that, that is why I'm just asking whether we have. Yeah, heat and trial is the one method, okay. But if you're not having. A, uh, options if you are have been asked to calculate the sum of the eigen the sum of the values of the element of the okay that also you can do directly but how generally we write okay okay i'll check I okay i'll check this also and some of you can also check how generally one method is the okay heat and trial but uh, one is how generally we approach with the Hessian matrix. Maybe in the next week or next to next week, I guess the Hessian matrix has been got. And I was assuming that we are writing from the Hessian matrix as well. But from the Hessian matrix, we are not getting the same thing, right? Yes. I mean, it is not the, I don't think it is a differentiation, but at least in the question set has. That is so far the questions that this, this that is generally not... partial differentiation only, right? Fx x is yeah, yeah. Partial differentiation of this function twice. Yes. This also is similar because we are getting the same thing. So this is a we'll get the real symmetric value one. But uh, the calculation part we are not getting the that I need to check. So you can also check, but Okay, I'll check and then maybe I'll post it on the discourse maybe. And you also can check how generally we write this using Hessian matrices. That Hessian matrix generally we use. But how generally, see here he has just compared the value and he can be, like in the lecture also, yeah, that so is... has just directly taken like 2x square plus something like that. He, he, and even in, even if you take the thing that I told, like that is still two way, right? For example, uh, in that same question, that is question number five. Mm -hmm. uh, in x y and y x, they have taken minus one and one. So if we can also take zero and zero, and it should still make sense. But like they are given the option as minus one and one. What is the answer with this? Is the last thing that where y square is zero? Which so, one? D, D option. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, in so this, that you can directly, case, yeah, yeah, in this case, you can directly say because, because of y square, square is, yeah, y yeah. square is only zero for this case, yeah. But other than that, we need to get the other factors x, y, and y, x, and things like that. That is where the weakness is. So if I'm calculating using this Hessian matrix, if I'll calculate, uh, so this will get two. This I'll get minus two. Okay, and if I'm differentiating with respect to x, so okay, it's fine. If I'll differentiate with respect to y, if I differentiate it to x, then minus that is this will become zero. And this two set. So if I'll differentiate with respect to x again, sorry, y, so it will get zero. So I guess this is not the width, uh, or and again, if I'm differentiating this with respect to z, so I'm getting two here. That also I'm not getting to this option. Okay. 
So that I check whether we use Hessian matrices or we generally compare the values to that matrices. Well, the pattern is like the same as we see in Hessian matrices. That f x six. The pattern is the same, but what do we do after that is the question. Just going through Google, what is that? Uh, okay, this is the higher Asian, but that's generally we write. Okay, and how will how did that help us? Okay, so see if we are having a this equation is there, right? Yeah. And if you have to calculate, so generally he wrote in this form. So because if so this is how generally you get the matrices, right? I don't know, maybe I'm doing some mistake or I'm just connecting two different things. I need to check that, I guess. So you can go through this lecture also. This there is one video of this Hessian matrix on the Khan Academy that also. Maybe that is okay. Okay, I'll check this. Okay. Yeah, other than that, there is this, this question is pretty simple. You can just uh, do with the, uh, like, if you are having any question in the graded assignment also, you can just do with the hit and run till that time I'll see and then I'll let you know. So there is a question here also. You can just do, I guess, hit and run. So here X, Y, X is there. So you'll have some option from A, B, C. And then Y also. So Y, so you have option from A and C. And then, so from A and C, something is correct, right? Yes. And then if you're in A and C. And this is what, this is This is uh, X, Y, yeah. How is this? I don't know, you have to do that, correct? You have to do the hit and trial now. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you can do, you can just multiply or maybe like in the earlier cases, we directly told because there was y square was not there. So in this case also, I, mm, this, this is, this is y, z, I guess. This is not, this is x, x, z, x, z is there. How is this possible? Okay, you just multiply and then see you can. Yeah. But if you multiply, then uh, I think the sum being equal to the uh, the sum the sum of x y and y x being equal to the coefficient, I think that is the logic that works. If you're directly going to multiply, like if you follow the algorithm, right? That should be the the, the Using the Haitian matrix, we'll get that certain placeholders, right? Yeah. Those those placeholders will be the same when we use the multiplication. So mm -hmm. if you, for example, if you multiply the whole thing, the coefficient of x squared will be the will be, for example, a one one, the first. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. One. So you can use the same placeholders that Haitian matrices have. Provided the sum of those for x, y, or y, x will be equal to x, y, and coefficient. So if you follow this algorithm, I think that's the, the I mean, I, 
I feel fairly convinced about that. Yeah. So, but I was assuming that we generally calculate the Hessian matrices only using the equations, but I was wrong. I guess I need to check again how generally we, like there can be the method like the method fit and trial and uh, from the Hessian matrices comparing the thing and writing the coefficient is the one method, but there would be some method from there directly you can match. I was assuming that ACM matrix is the method, but I was wrong, I guess. Okay, so uh, anything else from this week, uh, like the last content and all? Because the graded assignment is pretty simple, right? So first, second. Okay, one more thing I'll tell you. So for if I'm having A matrices, so... If I'm having a matrices A, this is real and symmetric. This this is PD. Okay, so this is poly definite. Uh, if you are having B also poly definite, so A plus B will be positive definite or not? Can somebody say? And how will it should be or not? It should be. Yeah. So how will you do that? See for PD, how is it like for PD? The energy in like x transpose a x will be greater than zero for this also x transpose b x greater than zero so if you are doing the summation also this summation will also be greater than zero right x transpose a plus b x will be greater than zero right so this is the one approach that you can go through so the good approach like the energy one so what about the a inverse if a is the pd if a is pd like a is positive definite so what about the a inverse Yeah, that would be positive definite. How? Because positive that means uh, if, if if you follow the eigen eigen value test. Yeah, correct. So if I'm having a, a is having all the eigen values as greater than zero. So a inverse will be having all the eigen values as one upon lambda i greater than zero. So this will be also be greater than zero, right? Yes. And if I'm having a matrix like orthogonal matrix, Q transpose, Q. So if this is poly definite, so what about Q transpose S Q? Like Q is simply orthogonal matrix. That will also be supposed to be How? Because, uh, like, if you take Q to be like a, vec a vector, this will be the representation of another space, like Q transpose SQD, SQ. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you can write A is equal to Q transpose SQ. So the characteristic of Q will be directly reflected in A. This is a similar matter because A will be S will be, or you can directly write this in energy form also Q transpose S Q and S transpose S. So this will become some earlier it was in the some X, what you can say. And now the variable so we can assume this Q trans Q into S as a Y and this will become Y transpose, right? So Y trans, if this was positive, so Y transpose X, Y will also be positive. So this is the one method you, whatever you told is also correct. So this, yeah. a, so this properties you can just have a, in your mind so that you can get some questions in the quiz also. So the quiz second also has been, I guess, forwarded. I guess the exam is on ninth, right? Yeah, so what you're saying, you're saying something. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, if you write this uh, Q transpose says Q, that is uh, similar to that. Uh, like if it is orthogonal, like A Q equals S Q, like we can write that in that form, right? Yeah, yeah. So the matrices will become similar. Yeah. Yeah. So the eigenvalues and all will be similar to that. 
So yeah, this was it. Anything else in this? So okay, so I guess uh, for this all with us, we'll meet on I guess Saturday. Those are pretty simple one only like sixth week. Yeah, fifth week. That first two videos that SVD, you should go through that again. And this last two are pretty simple, positive, definite. Next week we'll meet for that PCA. And after that, all the weeks are pretty simple. Okay, so till that time, till next week only, you'll face some issue. Other than that, everything is fine. Like from next eighth week, everything is pretty simple. So if you are having any issue, you can ask regarding the positive definiteness. Otherwise, we'll uh, close the session. So I'm using WhatsApp. So. Uh, for plus two, what would be the syllabus? Uh, it would be from five, like five, six, seven, eight. And you can get a bit like one or two questions from earlier week, but mostly it will be from five, six, seven. Maximum of one, two questions you'll get from the static week. That too, like if I'm asking eigenvalues and eigenvector, somebody can come and say me like you told me that uh, the syllabus would be from fifth week. Yeah. And how come you ask eigenvector and eigenvalue that has been taught in fourth and third week? So that's why I'm saying yeah. two, two, one, two question you can get from earlier week also because eigenvector those, those are very common so, like topics and yeah, losses are... losses and all I I think you'll not get like from first week you'll not get things. So will we revisit that? Those portions again, or like, are like the, no, that um, the loss portion actually, we were kind of mm -hmm. we kind of diverged right after week one. Uh, which like, which loss? I mean, uh, in week one, we made it or like discussed about the types of okay, loss uh, and machine all. learning, yeah, yeah, and then we kind of went in another direction, right? Like, in the, okay. From eighth week, you'll start again the optimization. There, you'll read the loss function again. So, eighth, nine, tenth is optimization, and then you'll read some basic probability stuffs. And then, so most of the algorithm ML algorithm that you'll read uh, in the MLT ML techniques, okay, and then the practical one you'll just use the library to do that. In the techniques, you'll use the basic Python thing to do the algorithm and in the practices you'll use all the skill and like all the libraries that we have okay so in this course generally you'll read the mathematical part maybe from optimization you'll enjoy but here the linear algebra is a bit like going part. okay Okay, then uh, I'll just close the session. So thank you everyone for joining the session. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone.